Hi, this is Lisa, and you are listening to I Love That Movie. This podcast is for movie lovers. It's not an unbiased opinion. It's not a straightforward review. It's just a couple people talking about a movie that they love. The format is each week I have a guest, and that guest and I discuss a movie that they love, something they're obsessed with, something they connect with. We'll talk about the plot, the director, and the actors, but we'll also talk about the personal connection my guest has with that movie. So if that sounds like something you want to listen to, keep listening. This is Lisa, and if you want to catch up with me on Twitter, you can find me at ILTM Podcast. I'm also on Instagram at I Love That Movie Podcast, and we have a Patreon. Uh, The show is always free, but if you want to support us on there, you can. That's at patreon.com slash I Love That Movie. Um, And I want to take a quick moment to thank our top patrons there, Chris Valga, Jeff Whitman, Philip Barker, and Michael Cross. Thank you guys so much for keeping the lights on. Uh, And if you like what you hear today, please subscribe and rate the show. It does help new listeners find us. Well, I've got a new guest with me here today. I have Robbie Fleming from Robbie's Reviews. Say hi, Robbie. Hello, everybody. Hello, Lisa. Hello. So, Robbie, since you're a first time on this podcast, would you mind introducing yourself just a little bit? Yes, hello there. I'm Robbie Fleming. I'm from the UK. Am I your first guest from the UK? Um, actually, I think you're the second guest because Stu is from. He is from Scotland, so he's nice, been on a couple nice. times as well. I'm from, yeah. I'm from England, the West Midlands, near Stratford upon Avon. Oh, very cool. Well, welcome. Thank you for you know taking time out of your day to to come be on the show. It's okay. I follow your Facebook group and I put a review in there every day. So I wanted to. Yes. Thank you for all of that. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Very appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I really love seeing, uh, you know, for listeners, we do have a a Facebook group and a lot of people contribute in there and Robbie contributes his review. So thank you so much. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I also did my own podcast with Justin Doyle called the Fleming film show as well. And I'm also on TikTok where I, review my first time takes on movies oh nice i'm gonna have to find you on tiktok then very cool thank you well uh robbie my guest always picks the movie so what movie did you choose to talk about today today i picked the 1988 italian classic cinema paradiso which i believe won best animated feature in 1990 oh wow that's very cool i did not know that but I uh, really enjoyed this film. Um, it was my first time watching it. Uh, w- w- what is your background with this movie? When when did you first see it? Well, it happened when I started getting into film reviewing because that's when I started watching more international movies. And one of my best friends just had his 25th birthday. This was during the COVID uh, pandemic. And he got this film for his birthday. And he kept telling me that I would like it and i said to him you know what i'll borrow it off you and then if I'll, i like it i'll do a review of it and that's when i reviewed this movie and i loved it it was his 23rd wow. birthday he's, he's turned 25 it was his 23rd birthday wow so that's that's pretty recent and you know this is a movie that i see on a lot of lists of like you know important films and there used to be this uh youtube channel i used to watch um i think it was called every frame of painting Yes. And uh, I think they talk about this movie a couple times on there. And so I've always been curious. So when you picked it, I was like, oh, okay. Um, and I'm really, really happy to have seen it. No, no, um, I'm glad you enjoyed it by the sounds of it. Yeah. Um, so before we continue, I'm going to go ahead and read like a quick synopsis of the film. I will say for anyone listening, we don't really do like a, you know, here, here goes the spoiler wall, or now we're going to talk about spoilers. We, we want to talk about the whole film. So we would rather, if you're interested in seeing this movie, maybe pause here, go see it and then come back and finish listening (laughs) to us. But I'm going to go ahead and give the, the summary for everyone that's still here. So young Salvatore de Vita discovers the perfect escape from life in his war-torn Sicilian village. The Cinema Paradiso movie house 
where projectionist Alfredo instills in the boy a deep love of films. When Salvatore grows up, falls in love with a beautiful local girl, and takes over the Paradiso's projectionist, Alfredo must convince Salvatore to leave his small town and pursue his passion for filmmaking. Oh, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I think you mentioned before we started recording that that you like to you know, put this on the radars of people that really love film because you feel like there's just so many people that need to see it. Yes, yes. This is definitely an essential watch if you love filmmaking because this is a movie about the love for films and filmmaking. So it goes hand in hand with people that love films. Yeah, the way that it's woven into the narrative is really beautiful. Um, And this was directed and written by Giuseppe uh, Tornatori, who you know, kind of drew on his own life, right? That was the biggest inspiration was just his own childhood experiences. Unfortunately, this is the only film I've seen directed and written by him. I've not explored his other movies yet. Same, same. Yeah, this is the only one that I've seen. I know they they shot this in Bagheera, Sicily, uh, which is his hometown. So it's like, you know, he kind of found a way to weave his own experiences into this narrative um, that makes it like pretty easy to follow and, Um, I think the setting, just like everything about the movie, I think works really well. Uh, Giuseppe, uh, and if if I'm mispronouncing this, I'm so sorry, (laughs) y'all. Tornatore, uh, his intention was that this movie would serve as an obituary, actually, for traditional movie theaters, like the one in the film, and the movie industry in general. But after the movie's success, he never mentions that again. (laughs) So it's like, I think there was a time, and, and I feel like that keeps happening, actually, as recently as during the pandemic, right, where we we kind of are really worried that we're about to lose all theaters, and then they seem to just evolve, right? Definitely, definitely. I'm working at a cinema at the moment, and oh, nice! It's amazing when Top Gun Maverick first came out, and everybody was going back to it. And even though we only like show it once or twice a day now, people are still going to see it. It's never empty when you go and see Top Gun. I know. Isn't that crazy? I mean, honestly, it feels like everything Tom Cruise puts his name to does really well. But yeah, it's like, who would think that in, you know, 2022, we'd be going and seeing another Top Gun film. (laughs) But we are. Um, I remember back when everyone was predicting that all these movie theaters would shut down. What if they don't come back? And I always felt that that wasn't going to happen, but that things would evolve and change. Kind of like we see in this movie and has happened before, you know, things just they change and there is sort of something that's lost a little bit, you know, every time something changes, I know in this movie, they, or uh, one of the facts that I read about this movie was that by the end of 1956, Italy had 17,000 movie theaters, which was the most in Europe. So really it's almost like it was a, uh, you know, a central point of film. Um, And I don't know that that's the case anymore, but it kind of speaks to, you know, what's going on in the movie. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It does kind of speak. I mean, towards the end, it is kind of a sad story, but it's got a good hopeful message as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's there's some really heart-wrenching moments, I think, where, you know, Alfredo talks about how, you, you know, the sort of the saying, like, you can't ever really go back home kind of thing. You know, so much changes, uh, technology changes, the world changes as we watch this movie. Um uh, Toto himself changes a lot, um, but but I agree. There's some there's some hopefulness in it, especially in Toto's life, right? Where he he goes on to become this great director, and obviously the director is sort of it's almost autobiographical. So you have to wonder if he had some sort of connection in his own life, similar to the what's happening in the movie. But as as though though it's got sad moments, I didn't see it as an overall sad film. Yeah, yeah. I wonder, does Steven Spielberg's got a new autobiopic film coming out? I wonder if this will be similar to his movie. Oh, that's a good point. Um, I don't know. I'm excited to see that, but I don't know. I, wh- one of the things I really liked about this film was the evolution of film itself that's kind of happening in the movie, you know, with how uh, flammable the the film is and then how later... Uh, you know, they're able to come up with this film that doesn't catch on fire all the time um, and things like that. I, I like those kind of points in the movie. Definitely, definitely. There are some very solid points in this in this movie a lot. And I also love the performances as well from, in this film. I think the projectionist is probably the best performance in the film. 
Oh, I know. I feel so much for him. So do, when you say the projectionist, do you mean Toto or do you mean Alfredo? Alfredo. Alfredo, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. He is like the perfect like father figure in the movie. And yeah, he just gives such a good and nuanced performance. Normally, we, we talk about all the the actors and I, and I don't mind going over with them with you as well. Although, you know, I don't know a lot of these names. <laughs> no, no, I, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't, but the cast list who I have here, uh, Antonia Atiki, Enzo Cannavale, Isa da- Daniel, Danieli, sorry, Leo Galotta, Marco Leone, Papella Maggio, Agnesi Nano, Leopoldo Trieste, sorry if I'm mispronouncing these names, Salvatore Ciesco, Tano Cia Marosa, Nicola Di Pinto, Roberta Lina, Nino Tezzo, Jox Pinair, who does the adult Salvatore, he's called Oh, yeah. It's called Toro or Toto in this film, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of and a nickname. The star of the show is Mr. Philippe Norette, who plays Alfredo. Yes, I agree. I also think that the kid that plays Salvatore, who's also named Salvatore, uh, when it is really good. Like he's I had read great. some. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a really cute kid and he's got good instincts and. I don't know. I, I think he, he does like a really good job too. But yeah, certainly Alfredo is, is he's the guy that pulls out our heartstrings the most throughout the film for sure. Definitely, definitely. But my favorite element of this mo- movie has to be the music. Mm, it is beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. Because I love Ennio Morricone, I think. And he did this uh, music with his son, oh. Andrea. And I think this is the best score Moroni has composed. I mean, don't get me wrong, the man's a master and he's made some incredible music like The Good and the Bad, The Ugly or The Hate for Light mm-hmm. or The Thing. But this one just has a place in my heart as his best music to date. Ah, I didn't realize that connection, but that is really cool. Um, So do you want to talk a little bit about maybe some of your favorite scenes from the movie? Uh. I like the scene where he's watching the John Wayne film and you see the iconic shot of the movie with him watching the film. Yes. Because that shot like became like replicated a lot. I've noticed it I noticed it in have you ever seen the film Belfast? Yes, yes. There's a, there's a oh, shot. that's such a good point. I, I hadn't thought about Belfast while watching this, but there is a pretty big connection with similar, you know, there's a war torn nation and at the same time they're you know the the movie theater is is a place of refuge exactly exactly and yeah yeah they they both have a similar shot of him watching the movie oh and you know it always reminds me about how you know growing up my father really liked westerns and i didn't really relate to that as much but i mean westerns i mean before like you know star wars (laughs) and stuff like that it, it was cowboys and indians right i mean that was what little boys love the most you know in movies and so you kind of forget that until you see some of these like films that are drawing on older films exactly well westerns are what what used to be like marvel films at the time. yeah yeah oh, that's an even better more current uh <laughs> comparison you're you're absolutely right i also liked how um you know something that i always thought was interesting that i didn't know a lot about how theaters used to be until um, I actually probably until I started doing this podcast and reading a lot more about it. But um, I like, you know, that they show a little bit, you know, this is how everybody gets their news. I think we forget that, that like we take for granted, you know, now we've all, we look at our news on Twitter, on Facebook or wherever else. Um, Not saying those are great sources, but just saying that's where we see it. Uh, But, you know, before that it was TV and before that it was the theater, you know, people would have to, see news while they watched a movie wow that sounds yeah, interesting it, yeah it's like you you forget like not it people didn't have tvs in their homes you know at this time so that that was where they got their news yeah what's an what's another one that you really liked i love the ending scene because it makes me sad 
Yeah, I, it's, you know, this movie is very, like, nostalgic and sad. I mean, it, it is a love letter to film and a love letter to, like, the way that the film industry changed so much. Um, and then when they tear down the theater at the end of the movie, it's yeah hard to watch. But you get the feeling that, like, you know, everyone's watching and they're sad, but they just, there's so many good memories tied up in that place, too. Yeah, yeah, as I was uh, saying, uh, a theatre that's in the same town I work in, there used to be two cinemas where I work in Stratford. I work at the mm-hmm. newer cinema, to the older cinema to got knocked down, but I still have good memories of going to that cinema because I saw the last Harry Potter film in there, I saw Guardians of the Galaxy 2 in there, and it, it just creates good memories even though the building is not existent anymore. Yeah, so you could kind of relate to that part of the movie. It kind of felt a little close to home. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I even saw The Shape of Water in there, and that became like, one of my favorite movies ever. Oh, yeah. So many good memories made in a theater. I, you know, have always really pushed that people should go to the theater because it's such an experience. But then, of course, uh, you know, when the pandemic started, that was that was one of the things I missed the most was going yeah. to the theater until they... Was a till I was able to go back. So there was also um, another theater I used to go to as a kid, and I saw the first Harry Potter film in there, and I saw Shrek in there, and the last film I saw in there was the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. <laughs> but after Aww. that, it got knocked down into a car studio, and again, it's you can relate to that with this film. Yeah, and that's interesting because I mean, this movie takes place. So long ago, but even today, we're still kind of having similar experiences. What, that we're having like a childhood cinema being like destroyed? Yeah. Ugh. Um, I I really liked, um, I mean, I liked every film with Alfredo and Salvatore. But I think you're talking about the end of the movie. When he gets that reel of film and uh, Alfredo had saved all those passionate moments and violent moments and, and cut them all together into one reel. I, I found that really moving. Yeah, definitely. It was really sweet. Um, yeah. Cause in the movie, I guess, you know, in Italy, it, it seems like because, you know, it's, it's Catholic and, and the church has such a powerful presence there in the earlier part of the film. Uh, the, the priest has, the projection of Alfredo actually cut out anything too salacious that happens in the movie, which, you know, their definition of something salacious is pretty tame by today's standards, any kiss, anything too violent, you know, so he cuts them all out. And there's that really great scene where Salvatore is like, can I keep all these, you know, scenes? Can I, can I take all this uh, film home? And he says, no, because, and he's like, well, why not? He's like, well, I got to put them back in the, in the reel of film when I send it back to the, you know, to where they, they come from. And he's like, but what about all this? The kid's really smart. He's like, see it all right here in the trash. And he's like, you know what? Fine. You can keep it, but you have to leave it here. And then Salvatore sneaks home some strips of film. And the only way to look at them is, you know, hold them up to a candle. It actually later leads to a fire, which, you know, is sort of a, a, a foreshadowing of a really big fire that happens later in the movie. I just thought the way they did that was really smart. And, I just thought it, it was great seeing the the love of film that's blossoming in this kid where he's, you know, he's he's holding up the little pieces of film to the light and he's kind of calling out his own shots. And that, that goes on to, to sort of uh, inspire him later in life when he becomes a filmmaker. I feel sorry for Alfredo when he goes blind. Yes, that was terrible. I I actually thought he was dead. I don't know if you thought that the first time you watched it, but... You know, the fire is awful. The kid's trying to get him out of there, but it's really difficult. And then you find out he's alive, but he's blind now, which seems like an incredibly cruel and kind of tragic end for somebody that his whole life was, he was looking at the projection, the, that he was a projectionist. And um, yeah, it's, it's tough, but gosh, it's like, that's something you don't think about anymore, right? That the film was that flammable and, he, he even talks about earlier in the film that he used to have to hand crank it. And if you didn't, if you stop for just a second, it would light up. And now they, there's a machine, but something still goes wrong. 
And everybody abandons Alfredo pretty quick, huh? Only that kid is like concerned about him. Yeah. When that fire that, happens. That was a bit sad. Yeah. But at least he's alive. And it kind of seemed like after he wasn't the projectionist anymore, he did find a partner. And so in some ways things were better. And then Salvatore kind of becomes his eyes after that. And he becomes the projectionist. Yes. Yes. I like how he took over as the projectionist. Yeah. And earlier Alfredo had said that, you know, it's a very lonely life because you, he, has, he has to like be so dedicated and watch all these movies and it's it's lonely up there in that booth so he kind of didn't want that life for Salvatore but he's so in love with film that you know he he can't get away from it and they become so close also because of you know the absence of Salvatore's father definitely, definitely. I thought that was those were tough scenes too with his mother and how yeah the, the dad you know he kept saying is he going to come back there's a, a, lo- a long part of the movie where you're not sure his father's dead but then he comes back but he immediately leaves again and goes to germany that was a bit sad yeah he kind of abandons him and alfredo sort of becomes his father after that yeah but to be honest i think he had better guidance and alfredo Yes, I think so too. And I know the mom got upset that the the film is really flammable. It almost burns down their house, which again foreshadows what's going to happen to Alfredo later. But I think the mother recognizes after a while that he really needs this uh, positive male figure in his life, and it becomes a a lifelong friendship. Definitely, definitely, and that spot is good. Is the yeah. fact that he makes a friend out of Alfredo. And it's weird, because in society now, you'd be a bit sceptical of obviously all the all the bad people in the world, but in this film, it's kind of nice to see a boy and a man have a nice friendship together. Yeah, they're, I think they're both looking for something. I mean, they both share this love of film, and I feel like Alfredo feels that... I mean, I think he alludes to it a couple times in the movie that he kind of, you know, he didn't find love, he didn't start a family like he wanted to or maybe he meant to and now he's kind of already at the end of his life so it, it's sort of meeting this little boy sort of gives him that sense of family back he gets to have that uh through salvatore definitely um, definitely so yeah they have a very like uh yeah father-son type relationship definitely definitely and I felt like Salvatore went from he, you know, his uh, I think Alfredo said his dad looked kind of like Clark Gable. So he would he, he used to fantasize that that was his dad, you know, and then after a while, he kind of just accepts or transfers that love to just Alfredo himself because he's always there. On IMDb. It has an 8.5 score and is the 53rd top rated movie. Oh, wow. That's pretty high. <laughs> and I also like to look at the awards. Oh, yeah. And it won Best uh, Foreign Language Film in 1990. That makes sense. I feel like if you make a movie about film, the Academy really likes that. <laughs> Definitely, yes. And then I think it, I do think it deserves it. And it also um, won five uh, BAFTAs. It kind of, I mean, it's not the same thing at all, but it sort of reminds me of how I felt when I first saw the movie The Artist. I love The Artist. Yes. And that was more specifically about silent film, and this yes. is more about film in general, but it reminds me a lot of that movie. I like a lot of um, films about filmmaking. Uh, this, The Artist, Mank, The Disaster mm-hmm. Artist. I, I like all their movies. They're all about like filmmaking and how they dive into being a filmmaker. Yeah, I agree. What do you make of, you know, Alfredo at one point tells Salvatore that he needs to leave and never come back and not even call them, not even... I mean, they kind of set that up early in the movie when it sort of opens with the mother calling him over and over. And it's because Alfredo's passed, we we later find out. Um, But, you know, he tells him not to look back. What do you think of that advice? I think he's absolutely right that if you be if you want to be a filmmaker, you have to move on and not look back. 
Hmm. Yeah, I felt... I'm kind of glad that he goes back at the end. Yeah, I know that Alfredo didn't want him to, but I'm glad that he went back at the end and, and saw his town one more time and, and was there for his funeral and stuff. But he did kind of, he does kind of mention that, you know, he comes back and he does feel like everything is so different now. Like he's kind of left the town behind. His life has moved on and the town is kind of almost in decay. It seemed like it, it was like just a lot of things were, were so incredibly different. Definitely, definitely. Definitely. There is another scene that I do like in this movie. It's a scene in his classroom. And <laughs> it's the scene where one of one of his uh, work uh, school uh, mates is getting like told off and humiliated in front of the class. Oh yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, and I'm kind of glad that this film has some good uh, humor about it as well. And a lot of kids smoking, which you wouldn't see today, but again, kind of speaks to the time. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't see it. See it then. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I liked all the humor in the film, and I liked the way they showed like how important the theater was to like the social life of the town. In general, you know, all ages there, um, several different points in the movie. I like the part where, you know, they show a movie on on, uh, projected onto a um, onto a building. I thought that was interesting. And I I read a fact that like during the pandemic, they kind of did that again, like in real life, you know, projecting films onto buildings when people were like stuck at home. So I thought that part was kind of interesting. That that was interesting. That bit was interesting. Yeah, I like I like seeing that. It just it was a cool effect, and I'd almost kind of like to see a movie that way. There's also another scene, um, when he's when Salvatore is a little older and he's really sad that his girlfriend is like gonna go to a university somewhere else and and he's what in you know the the film is playing outside and he says oh this horrible summer i wish it would just end i wish a storm would come and it literally comes <laughs> right at that moment is that and rains when, the whole thing out watching the films on the boat yes yes that's i thought be- that scene was really nice scene. and then she just shows up and you you feel like i don't know he's kind of an unreliable narrator right like i i wonder if this even really happened or if it's in his mind but either way it's it's uh it's a really cool scene I really love the imagery in this because it's trying to to show how movies are his escape from reality, like they are to me. Yes, that's why when I first watched the film, it really, uh, it really like amazed me and just really made me feel better. Yeah, no, I I relate to that a lot. I think movies are really good escapism, and yeah, they're definitely like a stress reliever and an immersive experience and one of my favorite experiences to have. So I I totally agree. Definitely. And I like the way sometimes um, the movies that they're watching, like the facial expressions and the emotions of the film that they're watching will like kind of translate into moments in the film as well. So it's kind of like affecting the narrative also. It's like movie inception, you know, like movie within a movie. I, I thought those kind of scenes are really cool too. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, I also have my own awards thing. I think you voted on it a couple of times. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've sent me those links before. Yes. Uh, so for my Fleming Awards of 1988, Cinema Paradiso won Best Film, Best Director, Best Original Screenplay, Best Score, uh, Best Costume Design, and Best Sound. Well, I, I have to agree. I think, I mean, I don't remember all the movies from 1988, <laughs> but I think that this had, it was a beautiful looking film and all those elements were really important in it. It's, it's really cool that it was a, a movie about film and at the same time, it really was just a great film overall. Yes, it was the same year Die Hard and Who Framed Roger Rabbit came out. Oh, really? Okay, well, that, that is kind of difficult competition, but I mean, I love Who Framed Roger Rabbit. 
I do. I but, do. That's um, my second favorite movie of 1988. Oh, it? really? Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Um, we've done episodes on both Die Hard and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So nice. a lot of people love those movies. Um, but I think overall, like all the elements, I agree with you. I think this one should win. Yes. I felt kind of sorry for Salvatore's mom a little bit in this movie. So did I, especially when he visits her at the end of the film. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, him cutting off contact was, I think, more for dramatic effect. Yeah, definitely. Maybe sort of symbolic of the leaving the nest kind of thing. Like, I don't think he really has to cut off all contact, but his mother is really compassionate uh, about that because he apologizes and then she says, you did what you had to do. And you're a good person and you did what you thought was right. So she kind of gives him that forgiveness. I, I think if I left my hometown without contacting anybody, I think my mum would go furious. <laughs> yeah, I feel like my parents would come looking for me. <laughs> I don't think they'd accept it. Yeah. But I feel like it's more to add like, you know, an intensity to the movies. Even same with, I think, Alfredo too, being like, get out of here, never, don't even call me. I mean, I feel like some of that is just to add to the drama. It like makes it really effective. But in real life, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. De- definitely, definitely. Um, are there other scenes that we haven't talked about yet that you wanted to, to touch on specifically? Uh, not necessarily a scene, but I wanted to talk about like the opening. Oh yeah, go ahead. The opening is just beautiful because it introduces like to our uh, to this little uh, town where the film takes place, and just the mm-hmm. beautiful music obviously appears. Yeah, it, it kind of yeah shows like the little town square and all that. So yeah, I I agree. It was a really good opening scene. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think we covered some of my main favorite scenes. Um, and I agree with you that probably one of the most jarring ones is when they destroy the theater. Yes. And also when they destroy it, it almost looked like a set. Like they were almost like taking you out of the movie for a second. And I kind of liked that about it. Yeah, I don't think they have the budget to blow up an actual building. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's it's effective in terms of like what he's trying to convey, you know. Um, so I like that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, I don't know. We we breezed through all my stuff. Did you have any other things that you wanted to kind of touch on? Uh, I'm just trying to think now because I think I've literally covered everything I wanted to cover. About yeah, I think movie. I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a really straightforward narrative. It's yeah. two hours and 35 minutes, but I feel like even though that's the case, it doesn't feel like a long movie. I, I it, only it, watched a two-hour cut. I have not Oh, watched, you watched the two-hour uh, cut? I, I, didn't, I haven't watched the director's cut yet. Which oh, like that's right. The director's cut's a little longer. Long. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're correct. But regardless, it, it doesn't feel like a long film. Like I, I, that's it's edited very well and keeps the story going really well. I, I never felt like it was lagging or anything like that. It, it felt like it used the time really wisely. Um, well, if we're kind of towards the end here, then that actually brings me to my last couple of questions for you. I always ask, you know, what what is it about this movie that keeps you coming back to it? Like, why do you think you've watched it more than once, reviewed it, enjoyed it? You know, what is it about this film that you love? I think it's because it, it touches me personally and I've always had this love for film since I first saw Monsters, Inc. And I think Cinema Paradiso was the film that made me relate to films or made me realise why I relate to films a lot. Hmm. Like the way how Salvatore relates to the films in, in Cinema Paradiso. And the way how they become everything to him and he goes on to be a filmmaker. And it's kind of hoping that this becomes my reality with film reviewing. Yeah. Well that yeah, that's a really positive way to look at it. Um and I, I would have to say that I I share that sentiment that movies have always been really important to me, uh, from a young age. And so 
you know, this kind of movie that is about the love of film. I mean, any, anybody that likes to watch movies would really relate to, to this movie and relate to the character of Salvatore. Yeah. I kind of like too, that he's not like necessarily like a loner or anything. I mean, he's got friends, he's got family, yeah. but he just, it's his main hobby. It's his one true love kind of thing. And I, I really liked that about it. Is I think there's crazy? even a point of that in the movie where the mother is kind of like, saying that you know he's ne he was never in love he never settled down but to salvatore like this is this is his purpose you know and i i think if you really love movies you kind of relate to that a little bit even if your main job isn't necessarily making movies but for you it's like you know you like to review films for me i like to do this podcast you know anybody that really loves movies can kind of relate to that aspect of it um how would you pitch this movie to someone who hasn't seen it before I'd ask them if they've ever watched an Italian film and tell them that Italian films are a lot more different to American or uh, British movies because they're kind of made of more of a unique style. I mean, Italians like to put different style on things because their style of uh, soccer or football, whatever you call it, is very unique. And so is their style of music and their style of film. And I like Italian films because they always think outside the box. I also love Life is Beautiful and Eight and a Half. And I like their movies because they're unique. And that's why I like Cinema Paradiso, because I think it touches it on a more unique level by showing us our love for cinema. Yeah, you kind of mentioned earlier that this was sort of like when you started watching a lot of foreign film. And, you know, I sometimes people will not watch a movie because it's subtitled. Um, or it's in another language, you know, or because it's in another language and things like that. They're like, oh, I don't want to read. You know, I don't want to put in the work. You're missing out on so much if you don't do that. Exactly, <laughs> there are exactly. so many That's great why I movies out there. People. Yeah. And like like you said, it's it's fun to see a different perspective. This is made differently than a movie would be made, you know, in the States or in the UK or in other parts of the world, the, the Italians have their own way of, of telling a story and it's a really unique perspective and it's fun to watch. And you're right. It tends to be outside of the box, more art housey. Um, and it's really good. So yeah, I think that's a pretty good way to put it. Um, well, Robbie, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thank you for picking this movie. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm hope that you'll come back and that we'll, We'll touch on another film sometime. Yes, yes, we will, we will. And uh, thank you for checking this movie out and talking to me about it. If you guys are listening, uh, check out Cinema Paradiso. And if you want to hear my review on it, just go to Robbie's Reviews. Uh, go on the search bar and search for it. It was in season one, so try and find it in season one if you can. But yeah, check out Cinema Paradiso. It's definitely worth the watch. And it's a really, really well-made and entertaining movie. Thank you so much.